Assalamu alaikum. Today lecture is postgraduate me ECMO window. When we should insert ECMO uh, and that it's proper timing. I will uh, show real two cases and when the ECMO is inserted. The first case is 31 years old female with a history of rheumatic heart disease. One year ago, she underwent pal palomitral valvoplasty, but her symptoms worsening. She has history of atrial fibrillation on warfarin therapy. ECHO showed that a patient with symptomatic severe mitral stenosis, moderate to severe mitral regurg plus a mild aortic regurg and severe tricuspid regurg. Left ventricular systolic function is normal. The septum is flattened. It's consistent with right ventricle pressure or volume overload. And the right ventricle is mild to moderately dilated and the right ventricular systolic function is moderately reduced. This is a picture uh, of uh, tricuspid regurgitation showing that right ventricular systolic pressure is about 50 millimeter mercury. This is echo showing that uh, there is a uh, flattening of the uh, 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 septum, uh, which are presenting uh, a presence of volume or pressure overload, and this is good contractility of the left ventricle. The patient admitted to cardiac surgery ICU as a post valve replacement with mechanical valve, mitral valve, tricuspid valve ring repair with the ring, and also means procedure with left atrial appendage closure. On admission, the patient has severe hypotension on maximum inotropic support and the lactate increasing gradually till reach 10.3 uh, millimole, and also a nitric oxide with a start. An urgent echo with ASCII showing that left ventricular systolic function is mild, moderately to severely reduced. There is moderately global hypokinesia of the left ventricle and the right ventricle severely dilated and the right ventricular systolic pressure function is severely reduced. This is the echo post cardiac surgery. Uh, we noted the same picture of RV and still the D shape of the septum and there is a reduction in left ventricular function. We started for a negotiation. We will go for ECMO or what the next step, what should we do? In these cases, we need multidisciplinary team. And the, the, this is the intensivist, cardiac surgery, and perfusionist for a discussion for this case. Here we started the discussion. The intensivist said the patient is on epinephrine, 0.35 mic per kg per minute, fosobrestin 5 units per hour, nor epinephrine, 0.25 mic per kg per minute. Uh, but the surgeon said, okay, but we can maintain MAP, uh, uh, mean arterial blood pressure uh, 65 and urine output 150 to 200 ml per hour. Uh, uh, the intensivist said, okay, but there is a urine output is uh, on uh, Lasix, uh, 20 mg per hour, and the lactate is steady high, and it's high, bilirubin is increasing. Uh, the surgeon said, okay, but lactate uh, will it start to decrease slowly. It was um, 11, start decrease now to 10, and also preoperative bilirubin is 4.4. So after this discussion, we decided to wait for the insertion of ECMO for low threshold of insertion. We're still on high doses of inotropes, and the urine output needs Lasix. And if the patient not improved for after four hours, we will go for ECMO insertion. Is inserted here. We can see um, the uh, can, uh, the venous cannula in VA ECMO, and this is the arterial cannula in the X-ray. And here the uh, venous uh, cannula uh, in uh, in the X-ray. Here we can see a global picture about the patient uh, for the first day, uh, day zero after OR. We find epinephrine in 0.3 mic per kg per minute, or epinephrine 0.28 mic per kg per minute, 5 for the present, and the lactate is 5.5. Uh, in the second, first day, uh, post, -card, uh, post uh, OR, uh, we will find the same high inotropic support and the lactate is increasing. Uh, before in the middle, the lactate reaching 11 and starts to decrease. And we if see if we see, we will find that uh, liver enzymes increasing and the bilirubin uh, jumping from 10 to 17. 
uh, and uh, after insertion of ECMO, uh, the, uh, after tw uh, about um, 12 hours of insertion, we will find the doses of, of inotrope 0.05 mic per kg per minute and nor EB uh, 0.03 mic per kg per minute. And the uh, white blood cell count also decreased. And this means this is an acute inflammatory response. The lasix stopped and the lactate normalized and the liver uh, enzyme started to uh, go down. After inserting ECMO for 48 hours, the patient dramatically improved. ECMO removed uh, uh, nitric oxide weaned gradually, then the patient extubated. The bilirubin after removing ECMO was reached 2.5. And here the echo showing that uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, LV is good contracting, uh, even the D-shape is enhancing, and there is good, better improvement in RV uh, after uh, removing the ECMO. Epical for chamber showing that uh, great improvement in the LV function and the still bit our turning back to the baseline of uh, RV and the patient need time for more improvement of RV after removing, after the treating the uh, cause of for pulmonary hypertension. After uh, five days from the ICU admission and uh, 10 days in the hospital, the patient charged it and went home. Second case, which is a female, a male aged uh, 50 years old, a, a case of diabetic, atrial fibrillation, on warfarin, and rheumatic heart. ECHO showed that rheumatic heart disease with severe mitral stenosis, moderate to severe mitral regurg, mild tricuspid regurg, the normal left ventricular ejection fraction more than 55, and right ventricular systolic pressure is at 50 millimeter mercury. This is good RV function, uh, preoperative. And this is step C for the patient to show the normal function of RV. And this is the difference from the previous case, which has moderately reduced RV. Here, the mitral regurg, severe mitral regurg, and the good function of uh, LV and good function of RV. This is the same um, uh, short axis view, which I showed before. Uh, to show th the difference between the two functions, especially in the RV function preoperative. The patient was admitted uh, to CSICU uh, post valve replacement of mitral valve, mechanical valve, and MACE with left atrial appendage closure. During ICU management, the patient has a severe uh, hypotension and maximum anthropic support and lactate reaching up to uh, 10. Uh, uh, 0.3 millimole. Uh, also, nitric oxide was uh, started. Urgent echo was showed that left ventricular function is moderately to severe reduced, and there is moderate global moderate global uh, hypokinesia of the left ventricle, and right ventricle is severely dilated, and right uh, ventricular systolic function is severely reduced, and right ventricular systolic pressure is elevated to reach uh, 60 to 65 millimeter mercury. This is the uh, LV post up, and uh, this is a part sternal uh, short axis showing the reduced R, uh, LV. And this is apical fourth chamber showing there is decrease in left ventricle and also decrease in dilatation in the right ventricle. Here, uh, also a picture of uh, tricuspid regurg, moderately uh, tricuspid regurg due to dilatation of the annulus, and there is increase in. Uh, um, pulmonary right ventricular systolic pressure to be 60 to 65 millimeter mercury. So the discussion went, will we go for ECMO or not? Are we happy to insert ECMO? The general was ECMO will not insert. We will give volume for RV as it's load dependent. We give volume, volume, volume for the patient. At the time we feel the patient is uh, sinking in the volume, Diuresis started, and now we have the lapse of the patient. Uh, this is the lapse of the first day. It is on epinephrine 0.2 mic per kg per minute, nor EP 0.2 mic per kg per minute, phosphorescent 4, 
and uh, lasix infusion started at first day 20 mi 20 mg per, per hour and the lactate started to increase uh, reaching uh, lactate is a ton uh, uh, INR um, in the first day after at the end of the first day we have shock lever so at that day we lost the window gap for uh, uh, the, the, the window gap for ECMO insertion so now the INR 6.3 lever enzymes started to increase and pilorobin started to increase up up uh, for the patient uh, a platelet count decreased uh, uh, this is after uh, four days in the ICU uh, then total pyrrobin reaches 60 mg per deciliter, direct is 36. Uh, is, <clears throat> liver enzymes uh, started to decrease, and we find that ammonia increasing, and the patient has hepatic encephalopathy. After 10 days on mechanical ventilation and uh, treating of hepatic encephalopathy, uh, the patient started to improve, uh, extubated after 10 days, but still on minimal dose of inotropic support, uh, the patient uh, charged uh, from uh, a transfer from the uh, ICU after uh, uh, 18 days and uh, transferred to the floor. Uh, were still with uh, a high uh, pilorobin level, uh, about uh, 17 milligram deciliter, and uh, the patient the transfer uh, charged from the hospital after uh, one month. So now uh, we should answer our question: When ECMO should be inserted? This is one of the most interesting paper done uh, on post cardiotomy shock and uh, to provide algorithmic uh, management from the starting of the uh, plan, putting a map, you know, putting a plan inside the OR and after OR. A very nice algorithm to start uh, the patient deserve from the start of initial assessment. Uh, if this patient deserve uh, a surgical intervention for his cardiac disease, if he okay, what about post uh, operative mechanical circulatory support as uh, to uh, bridge for recovery and uh, to re relieve organ damage? And uh, who are patients should we put in our mind that they should have uh, ECMO? Patients with low ejection fraction, pericardiac surgery, uh, if they are younger than 60, acute onset of cardiovascular disease, acute endocarditis, acute renal insufficiency, and urgent or emergency operation. All of these should put in our mind that these patients should uh, have uh, early, uh, early post cardiotomy ECMO. Very, very nice uh, 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 mnemonics provide this paper about uh, re averaged uh, for the resuscitation, correct the ACD doses, and proper valve assessment and function, uh, correct the electrolyte, maintain sinus rhythm, and protect the airway to and minimizing the PEEP and uh, assuring that about the graft is working well. Uh, be careful for ECG changes and uh, starting to uh, individualize uh, 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 inotropic support to uh, support the dynamics. Sort of debate about the timing for ECMO. Uh, there is an expert opinion regarding the timing to uh, put ECMO and some suggestion. Uh, they recommended uh, they recommend to use early use of uh, extracorporeal after cardiac surgery in patients with intraaortic balloon and optimal uh, medical therapy and failure to wean from uh, cardiopulmonary bypass or marginal hemodynamics and uh, postcardiotomy shock initiated prior to end organ injury or onset uh, and this is um, uh, can be uh, predicted by lactate level uh, uh, should be less than four. And uh, the likelihood to have um, uh, more recovery for myocardium in the absence of uh, also in the absence of uncontrollable bleeding in patient uh, who uh, who post cardiac surgery. Also, we should note that patient who has uh, significant comorbidities, advanced age, elevated lactate in their injury are risk factor, which will add to the risk if we considered to use. ACLS or uh, post-cardiotomy uh, uh, support. 
and uh, from uh, the start preoperative implantation of uh, extracorporeal should be considered in patients with very poor condition like hemodynamics metabolic or structural abnormalities and those will have severe lung edema or uh, dysfunction to uh, help in preoperative uh, um, preoperative management the home message should taken the timing uh, of discussion should uh, strongly considered and the shortest ECMO window, the better outcome. Uh, ECMO insertion is a multidisciplinary team, and the intensivists play a crucial role in the decision. This is the reference of this lecture. Thanks for your listening.